assign me. For the first case review, it will be under the topic of judgment in default of appearance. So the name of the case is Badan Pengurusan Bersama Prima Yuan against Al Madinah International Foundation. So the fact in this case is that the defendant purchased 15 individual office units but refused to pay uh, the monthly maintenance services provided by the plaintiff. So later, plaintiff claimed the unpaid amount of maintenance charges including the interest. Uh, the judgment in default of appearance also was entered uh, because the defendant failed to appear before the court. In accordance, the defendant filed an application to set aside the said judgment but dismissed by the court. Moving on to the next part which is the issues. There are two issues arises in this case which the first issue is uh, whether the defendant can set aside the judgment in default of appearance made by the senior assistant registrar under uh, order 42 rule 13 rule of court 2012. And the second issue is whether the defendant liable to pay uh, the monthly maintenance, sinking fund charges and quick rain payment to the plaintiff. Next is supporting provision and cases. In this case, the court referred to section 17, section 21 and also section 25 of Strata Management Act 2013 to acknowledge the right of joint management body. Why? In the decision of whether to set aside the judgment in default of appearance, the court examined Order 42, Rule 13 and also Order 13, Rule 8 of Rule of Court 2012. Next, I'll pass this presentation to the next presenter, Amira. The first analysis of principle is to set aside the judgment in default GID of appearance. Defendant who wish to defend themselves must enter appearance. However, in this case, the defendant failed to enter any appearance within the specified time stipulated under Order 12, Rules 4, Rules of Court 2012, as the time for appearance of 14 days has lapsed. In order to set aside the GID, defendant must file the application under Order 13, Rule 8, Rules of Court. In regards to the second issue, regarding the liability of the defendant, to pay the monthly maintenance, seeking fund charges, and quit rent payment, it was stated in Section 17, 21, and 25 of Strata Management Act 2013. It is the duties and power of the plaintiff as joint management body to impose such payment. By referring to three of these sections, it shows that JMB is the only body and have the right legally empowered to manage and maintain the common area of strata development under Strata Management Act 2013. As the defendant failed to pay any amount due to the plaintiff and after several attempts from the plaintiff to resolve the dispute, plaintiff then initiated an action to sue the defendant. Defendant also failed to show any irregular judgment and any defense based on merit, thus the defendant failed to set aside the GID. In conclusion, the learned judge determined that defendant has not submitted any merits as defense to the ordinary default judgment. As a result, the appeal dismissed with cost set at RM5000. I'll pass the presentation to Armisha. Next, we will be presenting on topic 9 of summary judgment. The case that we have chosen for this topic is M Bank Emberhat against Hexagon Distributors and Emberhat. Let's start. In this case, it was an application for summary judgment in which the plaintiff, a bank, asserted a claim against the defendants being borrowed and guaranteed that there were no tribal issues for full trial of the repayments of banking facilities provided. The plaintiff in this matter granted the first defendant general banking facilities. The plaintiff and first defendant signed two agreements for the facilities. The second defendant was the guarantor for the stated facilities and on the same date signed two agreements known as guarantee. The plaintiff issued two letters of demands for them over the unpaid payments due for the facilities after the first defendant default on repayment. The defendant's response to the first demand letter by pleading for time. The plaintiff in this case sought the outstanding sum for the BA and TA facilities. The plaintiff argued that the lack of credible defense proved that summary judgment should be entered against the defendants. The defendants, on the other hand, argued that there are triable issues for a trial. The court held in this case that the defendants have raised 
no travel issues and thus granted the plaintiff summary judgment and awarded them 3,000 ringgit Malaysia. The issue in this case is whether there were no travel issues for full trial of the bank's claim for repayment of banking facilities provided and whether the summary judgment ought to be entered under the rules of court order 14 rule 1. In supporting provisions and cases, First, the courts apply decision in Bank Negara Malaysia against Muhammad Ismail and others, where on the law regarding the consideration that must be taken into account for an application for summary judgment under Order 14. Following that, the court also cited the case of Boy State Trading Syndrome Berhad against Arab Malaysia Merchant Bank Berhad, in which the court agreed that the defendants are a stop to deny the plaintiff's claim. Next, uh, the case of Champaka Finance Berhad against Koi Laying, where the court decided that the burden of proof is shifted to the defendants to disprove the claim. And also, the court quote the Mofa Pacific against Paramount Corp, in which the court found that the agreement's terms signed and agreed upon both by parties are clear and that the defendants must bear the effects of those agreements. The court also refers to Order 14, Rule 1 of the Rules of Court 2012, where it states that a judge duty does not see when one party asserts a fact that the other party denies or disputes it on a feeder way. Court has an obligation to reject it, deeming the matter is not tribal. Next, I will pass it to the next presenter. Thank you, Misha. Hi, my name is Noni Lamasari Binti Azmir. I'll be explaining on the analysis of the application of civil procedure. The focus will be given to Order 14, Rules of Court 2012. What is summary judgment? Basically, summary judgment is some kind of fast track option in which the application will be initiated by the plaintiff to the court against the defendant. It is vital to mention that the essence of such judgment is to save time. Firstly, Order 14, Rule 1, the plaintiff must prove to the court that the defendant had no strong defense against the claim, in which subsequently shows the irrelevancy for the case to proceed for trial. In this case, the plaintiff brought a total of three grounds is to say both of the parties had signed agreement. Secondly, the defendant had indeed defaulted in payment. And lastly, the defendant unable to bring any credible defense to the plaintiff claim. It can be seen that the plaintiff had bring strong agreement on its part. Order 14, Rule 2. Describe the manner in which the application must be done, that is to say, it must come with an affidavit in Form 13 certifying the facts on which the claim or portion of a claim to which the application pertains is based. In this case, through the cover reading, it does not mention this part. However, it is generally understood that this is a common procedure for the plaintiff prior to the judgment. Order 14, Rule 4. Explain regarding the leave to defend on the part of the defendant. Order 14, Rule 5. Explain when the defendant may apply to the court for summary judgment against the plaintiff if it, if it was found that the plaintiff has no defense against the counterclaim. In this case, the defendant contended that there are a total of four tribal issues to be brought upon. The court quoted from Muhammad Azmi session court judges with regard to the tribal issues. He stated that the court need not only to be satisfied with the issue arose, but also ensure that those issues are tribal in nature. The court in this current case applied this principle, and it was found that the four tribal issues presented by the defendant was not tribal. Order 14, Rule 8. This specifically relate to the right to proceed with residue of action. Subsection 1 is for the plaintiff under circumstances, if he or she obtains judgment of the claim, he or she may proceed with action or the remainder of the claim upon the defendant. Thus, in this case, it allows the plaintiff to claim the remainder of action towards the defendant. So, the decision of the court found that the defendant have raised no tribal issues and thus granted summary judgment and awarded the plaintiff costs of 3,000 ringgit. In conclusion, we agree with the decision of High Court so how the plaintiff is to be granted the application for summary judgment where it should be entered against the defendant. Thank you.